Teachers, what's the funniest thing to come out of one of your students' mouths? My first grade class was learning the word powerful. Kids came up with examples of powerful things and people, like elephants and Superman. Then one boy said, Babies are powerful because they can cry and get whatever they want. Teacher, I need a pencil. Where do the pencils live? I have a bucket of sharpened pencils for them to use. Pennsylvania? I'm a teacher in Canada. Told the kids to name me five US states and their row could go out for recess first. A boy raised his hand and said, Rattlesnake? What? Oh, snakes. No, states. Name five states. Uh, T-Bone? You're naming stakes. States. States. Resource teacher was in the room and we were crying laughing. Gas, liquid, solid, plasma, Bose-Einstein condensate. In seventh grade on a test, the question was, why do some people see technology as positive and others see the same technology as a problem? And a kid simply put, because some people are Amish? I remember in year three, we had to answer a logic question about why there might be uneven amounts of shoes at the door. I'd recently watched Titanic for the first time, so decided to write, one person might be a one-legged working girl. It helped that my mum was a parent helper that day. I'm a white guy teaching ESL in Asia. My students were tasked to complete, the old man's hair was as white as blank. One student asked if she could write down my name in that spot. A phys ed teacher here. I always wear shorts while teaching. Parent-teacher conferences roll around and a grade one student comes up to me with her parents. Mr. Smith, I've never seen you wear pants before. I've never responded quicker to a comment before in my life to clear that up. Reminds me of when my wife worked in an undisclosed location women's shelter. My daughter wanted to see where mummy worked, but we could never go. I was picking up my daughter from school when she said, in the middle of the crowded school hall, Daddy, can we finally go and visit mommy in the shelter? This reminds me of my nephew when he was three. We dropped his mom, my sister, off at work, where she met a colleague outside and went inside with him. Back at home, my nephew reported to everyone that he'd seen mommy go away with a man. Context is a very important thing, but its removal can lead to all sorts of marvelous situations like this. I still enjoy it when someone introduces me, their game leader in Dungeons & Dragons, as their dungeon master in public, to many raised eyebrows. Teaching English to middle schoolers in Korea. I asked, Okay, what's another way you can express surprise in English? After going over expressions like, No way, are you serious? Are you kidding me? One kid yells from the very back of the room, What the frick? I did the same thing when I was little and still not fluent in English. My teacher said, What phrases can you make with beat? She was looking for something like beat up or beat at. I was reading a lot of stuff in English on the internet and without thinking much said, Beat the crap out of. So proud of such a long phrase I'd achieved. I was sent out of the class. ESL teacher. I had my students do an activity where they had to give directions based off a map and situations I'd chosen. The final question was more complex and one of my students wrote, Way too difficult. Take a cab. On a third grade Charlotte's Web quiz, give two pieces of evidence that support this statement. Charlotte was a good friend to Wilbur. The answer given was, she comforted him and didn't let him become pork. You know what I don't get about that story? Why is the pig the one who becomes famous? The real news is the freaking super genius spider who knows how to think critically and write in English. Who cares what it thinks about the pig? I want to know its thoughts on the origins of reality. An elementary school kid saw the answer key. He swore he'd come up with answers may vary all on his own. What's sad is we had to grade a first semester chemistry test once at university that was made for the medical students. I don't remember if the medical students were at first semester too. They took the test together with the first semester chemistry students but had an alternative version anyway. Thing is, the grading sheet with the right answers was leaked beforehand. One student wrote the correct answer down and then wrote one point for every correct formula underneath his answer. How do you finish school without walking in front of a car when you're that damn stupid? I asked a three-year-old what love was for a Valentine's Day card to his parents. His response? Maybe love is what tornadoes need. We call him the professor because he teaches us new things every day. In nutrition class at community college, the teacher asks, What's one of the first things you throw out of the window when you drink booze? 
and this kid just mumbles, standards. A fellow student once answered in the head to the question, where was JFK shot? Instead of the intended answer of Dallas. I mean, he was also shot in his car. I've got a story from my fiancé's childhood. They were testing her intelligence or awareness and showed her an image with a TV in the room. The TV was turned on, showing a cartoon, and had a plant on top of it. The question was, what's on the television? The answer was, a plant. Apparently, she kept insisting in utter frustration until the administrator bothered to look at the image and not the answer sheet. Reminds me of a friend's story. I don't know about public schools, but for sure at private schools you get a little quiz-type test with a teacher before they confirm you're ready for kindergarten. One of the things he had to do was identify pictures. He aced the section except for the picture of the airplane. He looked and thought hard and then burst into tears saying, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Turns out his dad worked for Boeing, and he was trying and failing to discern exactly what model plane the super generic picture was depicting. This is very cute, bless the little guy's heart. Probably trying to count the windows and work out whether it was a 73 or 747, coming up short for both. Why are you late? The bell went off before I got here. Why are you late? I had trouble with my bike. What was the trouble? I didn't get on it early enough. College professor teaching developmental psychology. At the end of the semester, I asked all the students to write down the most interesting or important thing they've learned. One wrote, Babies are stupid and old people still do the deed. It's not wrong, kind of covers the lifespan. My dad used to coach basketball and was trying to get kids into a 2-3 zone. He yelled out to one kid in particular who was in man-to-man, What defense are we playing? The kid slaps the floor and says, Tough defense. I teach forensic science. We were going to be using iodine to fume fingerprints. Iodine vapor is no joke, so I terrify the students and use only two volunteers with goggles and respirators at the chemical hood. But we still go over the MSDs, PPE, and equipment. I spend maybe five minutes talking about everything and the chemical hood to my class of 30. Towards the end, So, someone tell me, what is a hood? A hand shot up. Yes, students. It's like the place where you grew up. I face palm, the class laughs, and I'm unable to pivot his answer in the moment. He's on the spectrum and wasn't trying to be funny. This is intentional, but I teach a foreign language, so when I introduce the word for I don't know, I call on a student who typically gets answers wrong, and ask them to translate the word as if he or she should know it. When the student inevitably responds with I don't know, I tell them they're right and the look on their face is always priceless. In a class that deals with electricity, I asked the students to name a good conductor. They said, Leonard Bernstein. As a music teacher, this brings me great joy. Asked, what is the moral of the story in the little engine that could? I got the answer, don't pick up hitchhikers. To refresh your memory, the engine had trouble getting up the hill because he had taken on several more passengers due to their train breaking down. What side of the road do people in France drive on? Uh, miss, they drive on both sides. I'm not the teacher, but I witnessed this in class. Sociology professor asks, Why do you conform? Student, It's always been my goal in life to blend in. Professor, No more questions for you. In German, there's this little drawing game called Das Haus vom Nikolaus, consisting of drawing a house without lifting the pen or drawing the same line twice. Well, the act of drawing something without lifting your pen is called in einem Zug zeichnen, which literally translates to drawing in a train. So yes, one kid actually drew a house in a train. Okay, kids, name something living. A fox. Name something non-living. Fox crap. I wrote an exam where the question was, can you name the three models of DNA replication? She wrote, no. I mean, that was bad question writing on your part. Well, something like name three types of DNA replication would still result in the student writing no, you should recognize that this would be equivalent to leaving the question blank with the original wording. It was a valid answer to your question. It's not a valid response to the above rewording. Makes me remember something I did when I was in grade two. The student teacher took us into a private room one by one for eye exams. I've never taken an eye exam before and it wasn't really explained to me what was happening. I was just sat down and asked to read the first line of the chart, then the second, then the third. By the time it came to the fourth line, I was like, 
It's too small for me to read. One minute, please. Then I got up, walked over to the board, and started reading the letters. Apparently, that's not how you do eye exams. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I teach English to Vietnamese kids. I asked, what is the population of Vietnam? The kid quickly surveyed the room and said, more than 15. This guy is going places. I can finally answer one of these. The student is reading a science magazine during a bit of downtime. Students, whoa, 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 yo, mister, you mean to tell me pollen is like a flower splooge? Sort of. Man, I be getting that crap in my face all the time. Well, he's not wrong. Most of us are catching steaming floral lows to the face every day of spring. Some of us love it, and it makes others of us sick. Kind of like transmitted diseases. Fun thought. I asked my class, when is the time you've used integrity? My students answered, I wash my hands after going to the bathroom, even though no one's there. I don't think anyone I work with has any of this kind of integrity. Something my brother answered for homework. My brother was in year one, and his homework was to draw a balloon blown up. He drew a picture with lots of squiggly shapes spread out across the paper. He took it as the balloon blown up like a bomb, so he drew the leftovers of an exploded balloon. His teacher loved it and gave him full marks. Not a teacher, but a witness. In high school history class, the teacher asked, What was the peace treaty that ended World War II? This was a trick question because there wasn't a single treaty that ended the war, and this one kid blurted out, The Manhattan Project. The teacher laughed so hard that he went and got the other history teacher and had the kid tell him the answer too. Teaching grade 5. Students were fooling around during group work, so I said sarcastically, Do I need to stand here and watch you do your work? To which the student responded even more sarcastically, Well, you don't have to stand, you can grab the chair and sit. I can't remember which grade it was, but probably the second or third grade. Teacher was asking something relatively simple, and no one wanted to or knew the answer. What's going on here? There should be hands up like trees in the forest. Maybe this is a logging area, said the joker of our class. I had this pretty attractive history teacher. She was talking about jewels or something at a museum, and I blurted out, Mrs. Smith, I can show you some real nice jewels. And everyone bust out laughing, and the teacher got very red and flustered and embarrassed. And I looked confused, because I meant I would show her big diamonds and rubies to jokingly woo her. But the class and the teacher took it as I was referencing my nether regions. I was teaching kindergartners about needs versus wants, and I showed pictures of things, and we talked about why it was or wasn't. After a picture of a puppy came up, everyone but one kid said, want. So I asked him to explain his answer. He just says, but what if you're blind? Good answer. You win, kid. I once drew a woolly mammoth picture because I couldn't remember the name of it for a quiz question in science class. I got the point for it. I worked in a special needs class for a year, and there was one kid with a textbook case of Asperger syndrome. Very bright, very tough nut to crack. I tried to tell him a corny joke once, and he was not having it. Why did the chicken cross the road? He likely had business over there or was compelled by force. Well, okay. Easily my favorite memory of that class. My friend's also on the spectrum. It's led to similar punchlines to classic corny jokes. Why don't people play poker in the jungle? Because the undiscovered tribes who inhabit the jungle have had no contact with Western culture. Therefore, they would never have heard of any game called poker, let alone know how to play it. Trying to delicately explain to a three-year-old why she should be kind to her mom. You shouldn't say those things to mummy when she's sick. Who looks after you when you're sick and makes you feel better? The doctor. Well, frick. I gave a group of second graders a worksheet about main idea and detail. In the instructions, they were told to circle the main idea and underline the details. One child returned the paper to me very promptly, having underlined the phrase, the main idea, and having circled the details in the instructions. She knew exactly what she was doing when she turned it in. She was a clever one. She did just fine when I asked her to complete the assignment as expected. I said, The quiz tomorrow will be on, and my student shouted, Paper! Everyone laughed and I rephrased the question. One of my kids couldn't remember what country wasn't a part of the UK on a test, so she put Mexico. 
I teach English in Japan. When teaching my students, I asked, What do we say when someone is being too loud? And one smart ass yells, Shut up forever! I've never said this, no clue where he learned it either. I nearly lost my crap, but he wasn't wrong. The correct answer is, Be quiet, please, which I told him was more polite. He just grinned as if he knew, but didn't care. Smart kid, I'll miss him when I change jobs. I get this pretty often from my students. My favorite is when I say, please be quiet, to new students and they ask their friends what I said. Usually someone will come back with, shut up. I teach and coach baseball. After our short stop got thrown out on the second for the third out, I told someone to pick up Will. In baseball terms, meaning get his glove and hat so he can go out to the field. This kid who was new to baseball, a big lineman type of football player, claps his hands and goes to the shortstop. It's okay, Will. You'll get him next time. I cried laughing. Poor William. Well, at least he didn't get hauled over the lineman's shoulder and carried off the pitch. I'm a teacher, but my best answer to this is in high school. An English teacher was asking about the poetic reasoning behind why the moon is always used in a feminine context. Guy behind me says, because they're both on a 28-day cycle? When I used to teach anatomy, Anthony, name this bone. Um, femur. Is it a left femur or a right femur? Yeah. My godfather is a lobster fisherman, and all of the kids in the family would go out on the boat with him from time to time. There was a running joke with my uncle, dad, and godfather. They would get a kid to bait a trap, then applaud them for being a master baiter. My cousin went back to school after summer vacation, and when the teacher asked what she did that summer, She proudly stated, I became a... Well, you get the picture. Not a teacher, but just a witness to this hilarity. In science class in high school, our teacher was talking about electricity and lightning and the effects of being shocked. He asked if anyone happens to know what is the first sense you lose when struck by lightning. Without missing a beat, a girl put her hand up and answered, in all honesty, Your sense of humor? The class had to stop for a few minutes until everyone could regain their composure. This one kid, twice on the same quiz. First question, describe the bus ride at the beginning of the chapter. It was a bus ride filled with action, but also with emotion. Second question, what happens at the end of the story? The story ends. That kid is going to be a politician someday. My wife is an elementary school teacher. The kids were practicing their two times tables, and the question said something along the lines of, John lives in his house with his mum, dad, brother, and grandpa. How many total hands do the people in John's house have altogether? The answer they were looking for was 10, and they wanted the students to show that 2 times 5 equals 10. This young man instead wrote, Not enough information. What if someone lost a hand? He wasn't wrong. My wife just wrote good thinking on his assignment and gave him full credit. The kid was bright and knew his times tables, so that wasn't an issue. She also had his older brother as a student and said they were both smart, but jokesters. My wife now teaches kindergarten, this was when she taught third grade, and said she misses the funny responses on tests. She used to have a full word document of the funniest answers. There was a buddy of mine in college, Jay, who was legendary for his witty responses in class. We were training to be RAs and the residential life person asked, what are some things that as an RA you shouldn't do in your dorm room? People were saying stuff like drinking, etc. Jay raises his hand and says, Practicing medicine without a license. The trainer was like, uh, yeah, that's true. The same guy was in a film class. The teacher asks, what technique to find the scene we just watched? Jay raised his hand, gets called on and says, long, awkward silences. Teacher, could you give an example? Jay then proceeded to look awkwardly at the teacher, opening his mouth to say something periodically for 20 seconds. I co-teach a class and do a lot of the grading. Kids will write, I love teacher A. And I'm like, ha ha ha, this is teacher B. Nice try, losers. Not especially funny, but I've thought about it for a long time afterwards. I was substituting for an elementary ESL class. There was one young boy from Africa. We asked the kids in the class what three wishes they would like if they could have anything. This young man said, One, new shoes for my mother. 2. School all year 3. Roast chicken for dinner Most of the other wishes had to do with toys or candy. This kid was focused. We had a quiz about the 1960s in what I think was either my sophomore or junior year. One of the questions was, John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy were the first brothers to do... And we had to fill in the blank. We were doing a peer edit of the quiz the next day with another class's quiz. 
When my teacher got to the JFK and RFK question, someone raised their hand and said, My guy wrote down JFK and RFK with the first two brothers to do Marilyn Monroe. Mr. Q's reply was, Technically, that is kind of correct, but dock a point off anyway because the real answer is run for president. In conclusion, the Kennedy brothers' claim to fame isn't running for office, it was doing Marilyn Monroe. I was in a special ed room where the children were sorting nouns. The picture of the mailman went in the people column, the baseball went in the things column, and so on. There were several pictures of animals, and a little girl, who wore shorts with puppies and horses on them almost daily, sorted the animals in the people column, and was the only one in class to have done so. I pulled her aside to ask why she didn't sort the animals in the things column. I didn't tell her she was wrong, I just wanted to see her train of thought. And she started giggling and burst out laughing, saying, How is an animal like a thing? Animals are alive. Cows can't be like a desk. And she's cracking up because she thinks it's so silly that people view animals as things. I asked her if someone taught her that or if she just knew it, and she said it was just something she knows. It was touching and innocent and very sweet. I love animal lovers. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.